You're watching the Physics Classroom's tutorial series on kinematics. The topic of this video is Using the Kinematic Equations to Solve Problems, Part 1. And we have one question to answer, and that's how do we use the four kinematic equations to solve physics word problems? Let's get started. In an earlier video in this tutorial series, we introduced the four kinematic equations. You see them written here. The actual symbols that are used in these four equations can vary from source to source, so let's talk about this. The D in my equation stands for displacement or overall change in position. So sometimes this D is replaced with a delta X. Oftentimes the first equation is actually written something like this, where X stands for the final position and X subscripted O stands for the original position. In the next two equations, we sometimes find the D is replaced with delta X, where D and delta X both mean change in position. And then the, uh, another variation that can occur has to do with this T in the equations. On occasion, the T is removed and delta T is placed in its place, something like this. That means the same thing, the time over which the motion took place. And then the final variation that can occur from source to source has to do with this V subscript O, which stands for V original in my equations, but sometimes it's replaced with V subscript I, which stands for the initial velocity. No matter what symbols you use, what's important is that you find a set of equations, a form of which you're comfortable with, whose symbols you know. So in the four equations that I'll be using, D stands for displacement, A for acceleration, T for the time, V subscript O and V subscript F stands for velocity original and velocity final. Now let's look at how we might use these equations. First, what you have to realize is that every equation has four variables in it. So one of the basic ideas of using the equations is you read through a problem like the one you see here, and you look for three variables whose values are known. And then you find the one variable that you're trying to calculate. Once you've identified these four variables, the three that are known and the one that's not known, then what you do next is you look for the equation that can be used to solve for the unknown variable. You substitute known values into it and you solve for the unknown. Like here, we know 18.5 and 46.1 and 2.47, so I would relate these three known values to V original, V final, and T. And what I'm looking for is the distance. So I'm looking for an equation that has in it V original, V final, and T, the three knowns, and then D, the one unknown. And then I use that equation to solve for the unknown variable value. So here's a summary of that strategy that we'll be using. First, you read through the problem carefully and you identify the known values of three of the five variables in these equations. You write these known values down and you relate the values to the symbol. For instance, you might say VO equal 15 meters per second. Then you read through the problem a second time and you identify the unknown variable. You write it down in symbol form. Maybe you say D equal question mark. Now that you have four variable symbols, three with known values and one with an unknown values, you're going to look for a kinematic equation that contains those four variables. Once you find it, you write it down. Then you take the three known values and you substitute it into this equation, and then finally you perform some algebra in order to solve for the unknown value of the unknown variable. Sounds easy. Let's give it a try. Here's the first of three examples. You see the problem solving strategy listed on the right hand side of the slide. I'm going to use that strategy as I solve here for the unknown variable. It says starting from rest, that's an important little clue, a car accelerates at 6.52 meters per second squared for 3.80 seconds. There's three known values here. One of them is rather subtle. Starting from rest indicates to me that the original velocity was zero meters per second. I notice that the acceleration is 6.52 meters per second squared and the time is 3.80 seconds. It says determine the distance traveled by the car during this time. So what I'm looking for is distance. So in step two I say D equal question mark. Now that I know three variables that with known values and one with an unknown value, I'm going to look for the one equation amongst the list that has these four variables in it. I'm looking for the equation that has V original, time, A, and displacement, D. So when I go through my list, I notice, ah, it's the first equation. That's the one I want to use. So I write that equation down. 
there it is. Now the v original in this equation is actually zero, so the term v original t drops out of the equation. And then I st in step four, I substitute the known values in for a and for t, and I'm careful to square the t. I pull out my calculator, and in step five, I solve for the unknown. It comes out to be 47.1 meters. The displacement or the distance is 47.1 meters. This is the second of three examples. It says a bobsled moving at 32 meters per second decelerates to 22 meters per second at a rate of 4.8 meters per second squared. The three known values are obvious, but exactly what they represent takes a little more careful reading. The bobsled that was originally moving at 32 meters per second, so that's the original. And then it slows down or decelerates to 22 meters per second, so that's the final. And the rate of acceleration, or we should say deceleration is 4.8 meters per second squared, but I need to put a negative in front of it because that's a slowing down motion. So here's what I'm, I have when I'm done with step one. In step two, I try to find the unknown variable. It says determine the distance traveled by the bobsled during this time. So I'm looking for D. That's step two. D equal question mark. In the third step, I'm going to look through my list of four equations for the one equation that has v original, v final, a, and d in it. So when I scan my list, I notice that the second equation in this list has those four variable symbols in it. So step three, I'm going to write that equation down. There it is. Now step four, I'm going to take the three known values and substitute it into the equation. It turns into this, 22 squared equal 32 squared plus 2 times negative 4.8 times d. Now the 2 times the negative 4.8 is like a negative 9.6, so that second term right side is negative 9.6d. I want to isolate it and get it by itself, and I prefer it to be positive. So I'm going to add 9.6d to both sides of the equation. It would show up on the left side along with the 22 squared. I'm going to subtract 22 squared from each side of the equation so that I have the d term by itself. It turns into 9.6d equal 32 squared minus 22 squared. Now I pull out my calculator, find out what 32 squared minus 22 squared is, and then I divide that by 9.6. I end up with an answer rounded to 56 meters. This is the last of our three examples. In a hurry is traveling at 6.8 meters per second when she realizes she's late for an appointment. So she accelerates at 4.5 meters per second squared for 3.2 seconds. So you see the three known values there. The original velocity is 6.8 meters per second. The 4.5 meters per second squared, that's the A. In the 3.2 seconds, that's the t. So I write down the three known values in variable form as shown. Now I'd ask, what's her final velocity? The step two is identify the unknown, and that's vf. I'm looking for vf. Now step three is find the kinematic equation that contains these three known variables and the one unknown variable. I'm looking for the one equation that has v original, a, t, and vf, and as I scan my list, I notice the fourth equation in the list is the one I want to use. So I write it down. There it is. Now I take the known values and I substitute in. Looks something like that. And then I solve for v final. Pull out your calculator. You end up with 21.2 meters per second. Hey, we did it. We accomplished the purpose. We've learned through three examples how to use the four kinematic equations to solve for an unknown value in a physics word problem. It's that this time during every video, I like to give you an action plan, a way of helping you out to make the learning stick. But before I help you out with that action plan, I'd like to ask you if maybe you could help us out. If you like this video, why don't you give us a like down below in the, in the area below this video. Or if you really liked it, why don't you subscribe to our channel? We're going to have a whole lot more videos coming out this year. Finally, what you might want to do is leave a comment or question in the space down below. Okay, now for the action plan. Here's what I'd like to suggest you do. First of all, if you head off to our website, there's a section there called the calculator pad. It's just perfect if you're trying to learn how to use math formulas. In the calculator pad, you want to look for the chapter titled 1D Kinematics, and when you find it, look for questions number 18 through 35. Each one of those questions demand the use of a kinematic equation to solve for an unknown. Well, what you're going to find are the questions, the answers, and then an audio guide 
guided help file that will kind of guide you through how to solve for the unknown. Now, we could also suggest the review session in our website. It's perfect for studying for an exams or tests or quizzes, but it's also it's got loads of practice problems. So go to the kinematic section and you're going to look for questions 40 through 50. What you're going to find there are questions that require the use of kinematic equations. You're going to find answers and worked out detailed solutions. Give it a try. You might find that very helpful. And finally, if you just need a written reference, never neglect our physics classroom tutorial. It's written in an easy to understand language. It's a reliable reference and it's always there. Well, thanks for joining us in this video. Whatever you do, good luck to you. I hope you can make the learning stick.